Welcome to our lecture online. In order to understand how the atmosphere reacts every day to the incoming sunlight, after the sun rises, the morning comes, things begin to warm up, we know that the temperature during the morning continues to increase and some places continue to increase to well in the afternoon before it begins to cool down again. And so we want to understand how that exactly works. What does that temperature increase? What, is this, what does it depend upon? And why does it begin to cool down very late in the afternoon? Well, in order to understand that, there's a lot of factors at place, we want to understand the concept of the heat capacity of the Earth's atmosphere. How much heat can the Earth hold? And of course, the more heat you put into the Earth's atmosphere, the higher the temperature. So here we have what we'd call a column of air all the way from the surface of the Earth up to space. Realizing that the pressure at the bottom here at sea level is 14.7 pounds per square inch or 101,300 pascals, that means about one bar, which is atmospheric pressure. From that, we should be able to figure out how much air we have in a column. So we can look at it in two ways. We can take a column of air with a cross-sectional area of one square inch or we can take a column of air with a cross-sectional area of one square meter. If we take it as one square inch, the weight of that column would be 14.7 pounds. If we take it to be a column with a cross-sectional area of one square meter, then the mass of that would be 10,300 kilograms. We simply take the weight divided by the acceleration due to gravity and we get the mass. It's quite impressive that a column of air from the surface of the Earth all the way to space has a mass of over 10,000 kilograms. So now we need to figure out how many moles of air there are in such a column. And so we realize that the molar mass of air on average, because it's about three quarters nitrogen and one quarter of oxygen, roughly speaking, it's about 0 0.029 kilograms per mole. The molar mass of nitrogen is 28 grams and the molar mass of oxygen is 32. So the average is about 29 grams, slightly over 29.1 or something like that. So that's good enough for us. So now the number of moles in that column of air, we take the mass of the air, we divide it by the molar mass, and it's approximately 356,000 moles of air in a column of air from the surface of the earth to space when it has a cross-sectional area of one square meter. Now the internal energy of a gas can be calculated by taking the number of moles times the heat capacity with constant volume, C sub V, and the change in temperature. And if we assume that we let the temperature be just one degree change, so for a one degree increase, how much heat do we need to put into the atmosphere of that one column of air? Um, when the temperature, to raise the temperature by one degree centigrade or one degree Kelvin, we take the number of moles, we multiply it times C sub V, which for a diatomic molecule, and the atmosphere is primarily made up of diatomic molecules, it's 5 halves times 8.305, which is that universal gas constant. We multiply everything together, and we find that the amount of heat that the atmosphere contains, and in this case, one column of atmosphere, one square meter in cross-sectional area, is 7.4 million joules for every one degree Kelvin or one degree centigrade or Celsius, people like to call it Celsius, one degree Celsius increase. So for a 10 degree increase, it would be 74 million joules of energy required to raise the temperature by 10 degrees centigrade. So that's what we mean by the heat capacity of the atmosphere. And using this information, we're going to try to figure out why the temperature rises in the morning, why it cools down in the evening and cools down throughout the, even, throughout the night and then starts up again the next day. What does it play? There's a number of factors, but one of them definitely is the heat capacity of the air. So it appears like it takes in energy from the surface and then slowly radiates it out into space. And so we need to understand that a little bit better. And that's where we're going with this. So stay tuned and we'll get you some more information about how that actually works.